Good morning and welcome to Emanuel Live on Facebook Live. I hope you're all well and I hope everybody had a great week. A little cooler weather, a little taste of fall today. We don't mind that. For the, I think it's really been pretty much every Sunday since the, the warmer weather kicked in, it has been a blistering hot day and it got quite stuffy and warm in here. And I got to tell you, I'm liking this cooler weather. I, I'm all for summer. I love summer, but fall is my favorite and I love the fall weather. Just uh, one announcement today, and that is the last announcement you'll be hearing regarding the flu shots that will be given out this Wednesday, the 16th from 9 to 11 here at Emanuel. It is, uh, they should be free with almost all of your insurances. We will give a box lunch to all who pre-register and you can do that very easily by calling the church office and leaving your name and the number of people that will be coming. We will gladly add you to the list. And um, if you would prefer to respond by an email, you can do that. You can respond to the email that I send out every week, or you can send it to my personal email. And that is pastoryost at yahoo.com. Either way, and we will add you to the list. But please, if you have not made arrangements for a flu shot already or haven't gotten one yet, please take care of that, either with your own doctor, by going to another Wegmans or another place that offers them, or coming here Wednesday. Please take care of it. That being said, let's have some church. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us all in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. My dear friend, God hears the cries of all who call out a need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our hymn for today is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, and we will begin with the first two verses. In the red hymnal, it is 836. If you have the green hymnal, it is 551. Or use the sheet that I sent out via email. Yeah. 
So it may not be very warm in here, but it's very dry. So I apologize for my lapses in my voice <clears throat> a couple of times. Together, let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today comes from the book of Genesis in the 50th chapter. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming him. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear, for I myself will provide for you and for your little ones. In, a, in this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Here ends the first reading. And the second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans in the 14th chapter. And Paul writes, welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. And while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord who give, and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Here ends the second reading. And the gospel for this morning comes to us from St. Matthew in the 18th chapter. And Matthew writes, Peter came to him and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of God may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered payment to be made. He ordered him to be sold, I'm sorry, together with his wife and children and all their possessions and then payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord 
of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave then went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay me what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience on me and I will pay you. And he refused. And then he went and he threw him into prison until the debt would be paid. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then this Lord summoned him and said to, to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt that, because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay the entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do to every one of you, of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Here ends the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, the risen one, amen. Once again, this week's gospel begins with Peter coming to Jesus and posing a question. You know, I often wonder to myself, are these questions that Jesus poses to, or uh, Peter poses to Jesus, are they legitimate questions that he had? Or is he being kind of, the fall guy, or the other apostles kind of pondering and thinking up these questions and saying, Peter, he really likes you. You're the rock. You go and ask him. And besides, you're bigger than he is. He won't hurt you. Or are they questions that really race through Peter's mind? In any event, it always seems to be Peter that comes forward and asks these questions of Jesus. And today, he says to Jesus, if somebody sins against me, how many times should I forgive him? As many as seven? Now, Peter's thinking to himself, seven, that's a pretty big number. If somebody does something to me seven times and I forgive them each time, I'm one heck of a guy for forgiving him all that many times. And so I think he's probably thinking to himself, Jesus will say, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, go with that, Peter. But instead, Jesus says to him, not seven, but 77 times. Interestingly enough, I went to the Greek again this week, and as I was looking over the Greek translation, it didn't say 77 times. Jesus said to Peter, no, you must forgive 70 times seven. That's 490 times. That's a lot more than 77 even. And this number was given by Jesus to Peter not so that Peter could kind of keep a stroke count on a piece of paper or, or papyrus or something and say, okay, well, that's, that's 489, only one more time, and then I, then I don't have to forgive anymore. The number of 70 times 7 was given as kind of a metaphor. This number of 490 is to represent something more than actual numbers. This is the way of Jesus answering that says, you really shouldn't put any limit on the number of times you forgive somebody. Now, every time that I preach about forgiveness, I know there are people out there saying, well, do I have to forgive everybody for everything? Should, should a person who commits a grievous crime be forgiven 
of that crime. And the type of forgiveness that we're talking about here doesn't mean that the person, every time you forgive him, gets a get out of jail free card. The forgiveness that we're talking about here is that you are saying to that person, I am willing to forgive you because in your human frailty, you made a mistake. You did something wrong. Or at least I'm going to, in my head, think of it that you did something by mistake, not intentionally. I'm going to let go of the grudge that I hold against you. But if what you did is a crime against the state or the government or against humanity itself, there may be reparations that are due. There may be penalties that you have to incur. My forgiving you doesn't exonerate you from from any punishments that might go along. It just means that I'm saying, I'm not holding this grudge against you because if I hold on to that bitter pill of grudge, the taste of bitterness is in my mouth, not in your mouth. That grudge that I'm holding is allowing you and what you did to live rent-free in my head as long as I choose to let you. And then, of course, Jesus told a parable. He talked about a slave who owed the master a large sum of money. Let's put some numbers to that. He owed 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is a huge amount of number or of money. One talent, one talent would be the equivalent of 15 to 20 years of salary that a person makes. Think about it. You take somebody who's earning $50,000 and then Take that times 20. Then you take that number and multiply by the 10,000 talents. And we're talking about billions of dollars. This is is the size of of the debt that this individual had built up with the master. We don't know how it came to grow that large. It doesn't really matter. The point being that The debt was there, and the master was willing to forgive the debt. But then this very slave went out, and to another slave who owed him 100 denarii, which would probably be somewhere in the vicinity of five or six hundred dollars, he demanded it be paid immediately, and then when he couldn't pay, had him imprisoned. So the master forgave billions of dollars of debt, but this very same servant went to another servant or slave and demanded immediate payment of something in the neighborhood of five or six hundred dollars. That's kind of what Paul was writing about in, in, in his writing today. It was what Moses wrote about in the first reading from the book of Genesis. There is, there is no point in hanging on to these grudges and debts. Two days ago, we commemorated September 11th and the, the events of that day, 19 years ago. And I suspect that virtually all of us can remember what took place on that day in September. We can remember where we were, what we were doing when we first heard the news about that first plane that had crashed into the first of the World Trade Towers. We can remember probably many of us turning on the radio or the TV and as I did, I watched horrified as I saw the second plane fly into the second of the towers. Then we heard of this plane 
that went into the Pentagon and the one that was crashed in the field in Pennsylvania. We can all remember that day. We remember exactly how it made us feel, how we were stunned, how we just couldn't believe that what we had just watched with our own eyes on the TV set had actually happened. I watched it repeatedly throughout the day, and in my mind I kept thinking, no, this time it's going to be different. This time the plane isn't going to hit the tower, and all those lives weren't going to be lost. But it did. And 19 years ago, this past Friday, we commemorated it. But now think for a minute. Do you remember the day after? Do you remember September 12th, 2001? What was starting to happen in this country? This country didn't panic. This country didn't go off in 250 million directions. This country came together. You saw Congress actually working together. There were bipartisan laws that were passed. There were people from every creed and denomination. There were people, there were volunteer workers coming in from countries around the world to help us. And when they came in, we didn't look at them and say, you're the wrong color, you speak the wrong language, we don't want your help. People came in to help and we didn't care. All our prejudices and our biases we laid by the side of the road and we welcomed and we appreciated. And for that day and for months and for probably a couple years afterwards, our country truly was the United States of America. Any grudges were laid by the side. That's what I remember when September 12th, 2001 came along. We saw the climate in this country change, the mood in this country change. Yes, we were still saddened and brokenhearted, but we said we must work together to rebuild. As parents, we make mistakes. Every one of us who has been a parent has done something in the raising of their child that as they look back on it, they say, oh man, I should have done that differently. <clears throat> and that is, is, is a confession. I remember many times as punishment for Chris, I would say something that was totally outlandish. You can't watch TV for another year or something crazy like that. There's no manual that comes with being a parent. We do the best we can with the information and the set of circumstances that we face right at that particular moment in time. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes hurt other people. The wonderful American poet Maya Angelou wrote, forgive yourself for what you didn't know before you knew it until you learned. She's saying we all make mistakes, but then once we learn, hopefully learn from our mistakes and we get better information, that we do better. That's what our lives are all about. 
Because if we can just learn how to forgive one another for our flaws and our faults, remembering that we're all imperfect, this world will be a far better world. I ask you to think now, who is somebody that you should forgive? Think about it long and hard. and then do it. Amen. Let us continue with the prayers. <clears throat> Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies, Sunday schools, confirmation class, classes, youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by death. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this in every congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we continue the prayer for those recovering from illness or injury, especially Nancy Saab, Kathy LaVere, Ann Wright, Jerry Pellet, Perry, Al Heller, Sandy DiBianco, Waldemar Friedrich, and all we know to be ill or injured and recovering. We lift our prayers for those who are recovering or will be undergoing surgeries or medical procedures this week. Today, we lift up our prayers for Sean as she prepares for surgery later this week. We ongoing, offer ongoing prayers of healing for Nancy Son as she uh, recovers from a hip replacement surgery. We remember in our prayers the friends and family of Peg Bachman who died this past Friday. May she rest in peace and may those who loved her be comforted by the assurance of eternal life through the resurrection. <clears throat> and we remember those whose lives were lost 19 years ago on September 11th. Those who were working in the buildings, those first responders who sacrificed their lives in the hope of rescuing others. Be with their families as they continue to look back and reflect on that day that will never be forgotten. Remember this day, all those for whom this time of quarantine and separation is a time of great loneliness, 
Let us remember to reach out to them and bring the peace of Christ into their lives. And for those whose homes are not safe havens, especially those living in abusive homes and relationships. And as our schools and colleges and universities resume their academic years, we pray that even with this, the unusual methods of study this year, that they have the means necessary for great enrichment. And we pray for the safety and continued good health of the students, the teachers, and the staff of all schools and institutions. And let us remember that even as we gather in our own homes, instead of gathered together here in this church building, we are more than ever called to be your church. Let us be bold enough to continue your work in our communities in ways that might even be new and untried for us. We pray for all those serving in the military and their families. And we lift up our prayers for their continued safety and well-being. Let all homecomings be joyful ones. And as these folks in the military serve throughout this world on our behalf, we pray that we may all know a lasting peace soon and forever. And now we pray for any and all whom we name in our hearts or in the silence, <clears throat> in the silence of our hearts or name aloud. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. And we thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness for the knees that have taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, may our ever faithful and loving God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. And now the third verse of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <clears throat> Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of our joy of living, ocean depth. Now, my dear friends, go in peace, share the good news, for Christ is with us. Have a good week, and remember that you are loved. Amen.